Present day, it's Alicia and I'm here for another Bible study. Today we'll be studying Zephaniah chapter 2. Let's pray before we begin. Most righteous and eternal Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, on the authority of the Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. Father, we glorify your name. We applaud you. We celebrate you. We give you thanks. We give you all the glory, all the honor all the power all dominion due unto your name father hallowed be your name father we celebrate your splendor father we celebrate your beauty we celebrate your perfect righteousness and holiness father we celebrate you in everything that we see, that we hear, that we are made aware of the revelations that you've revealed unto us. We celebrate you. We glorify you. Father, the beautiful way in which you have enriched our life. Father, the ways you, you keep surprising us we are grateful we are grateful and we give you thanks father we celebrate you because more than what we can even think to mention you have done you are awesome how excellent is your name in all the hurt yahweh blessed be your name father we love you we love you father as we humble ourselves before you and seek your face, Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins as we forgive others. Father, we submit ourselves before you. We confess our sins. Father, we repent of them too. We want nothing to do with our sins. They're filth. We do not desire to be any way associated with filth. So we ask that you blot out our transgressions, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you strengthen our faith. Father, increase our knowledge of you. Strengthen us, Father, by giving us your wisdom and your understanding too. Father, fill us up with your righteousness. Fill us up with your truth. Fill us up with your mercy. Fill us up with your love. Fill us up with your peace. Fill us up with your joy. Holy Spirit, fill us up with your good gifts. Holy Spirit, fill us up continually. We need you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome, Holy Spirit. Find habitation and dwell, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, clean house. In the name of Jesus, Father, we turn to you with everything, for everything, in everything, through everything. Father, we leave every situation we're facing in your hands. We turn them over to you. Father, we ask that you release the armies and encamp around us. Father, so that we will remember we are not just people going through this wicked world. We are kingdom people. We are your children. And you will make the enemy pay. Praise be to God. Our enemy will be beaten so badly cannot even find a place to put foot in our face praise be to god heavenly father as we come to you upset their camps kick over their pot out their flame stamp all over let them understand they're nothing filthy rags, and fruitful works, nothing, Holy Spirit surround them. 
We're bringing the fat to them. Surround them. Surround them. And let them know. Today, they're going to see real power. Surround them. Unless they confess Jesus, they cannot get out. Because if they think to be bad and call upon the name of the filthy rag, they will realize there's no power in that name. But they call upon Jesus' name, they'll be able to get out from your flames, but surround them. Give them opportunities, you know, so that they cannot say they did not know and they did not experience the power of Jesus. Show them the power. Show them the power so they can't say they never know. And hold them down there. And those that desire to be saved, pursue them. Pursue them fervently. Jesus, save them. Let's welcome them into the fold. Those who decide to stay on the side of darkness, they cannot say they never see the power of God. If they continue to want to be a nuisance to the church, beat them bloody. Teach them a lesson. But we wish that they should be saved. So just teach them a lesson. Leave them some bruise that they'll look upon and remember. Not to mess with the church. But we don't want them to die. We desire that they be saved. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, help. Help. Father, because we know there are some babies right now that are being distressed. We know that there are some young people right now that are being distressed. Children that are being distressed. Father, we know that there are some adults that are being distressed. Father, we put before you the homeless people. Father, we put before you the ones that are strung out on drugs. Father, we put before you the ones who are going through pregnancy by themselves. Father, we put before you the men who have been thrown out of their home. Father, we put before you the men who have no purpose. Father, we put before you everyone who is hungry and thirsting for righteousness sake father we put before you those who are seeking solution to their problem father we put before you those whose heart have been hardened by unforgiveness father we put before you those whose soul have been bound up by hatred and malice and grudge Father, we put before you those whose heart are tied up with hypocrisy and pretend godliness, self-righteousness, clouding the judgment. Father, we put before you those whose heart have been set on evil. We put them before you, Father, because you will judge, because your enemies will be brought to their knees, because they will be beaten so badly. They'll scatter. Because, Father, when you arise, who can stand before you? Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Father, we exalt you and applaud you. Because we know you are our God. We seek you and we find you. We are grateful. In the name of Jesus, we're grateful. So, Father, as we go in this Bible study, plant the words in our heart in our soul, in our minds. Breathe upon the words, Holy Spirit, and let us get the interpretation thereof. We're grateful, we're grateful. Father, be with us in our going out, in our coming in, so that we will be guided by your love and your truth. Always, we're grateful. Holy Spirit, go before us. Prepare the path for us, so that we'll walk in the way that Jesus is. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, guard our mouths so that we will speak words that are seasoned with grace. Guard our ears so that we will screen what comes in, man or mine, so that no word 
or no thought that is not of God cannot enter in. But cast them out filthy rocks that they are. Keep our heart with all diligence. Secure it, Holy Spirit, so that nothing can enter in nor get out of that is not according to the will of God. Father, let us live a life that's pleasing to you. Help us to live a life, surrendered life to you. Father, we're grateful. And so, Father, whatsoever I fail to mention, you will grant according to your riches in glory. Praise be to God. Father, we present our generations before you, Father. As we have confessed the sins of our ancestors, Father, we pray for the hope of our descendants, that they will be protected by the name of Jesus, that they will be established in the name of Jesus, that Jesus, you will always have those in our descendants that are set on you, that our generation will perpetually praise you and seek your face, that you will never allow them to fall into sin and to be lost. Father, we pray for the salvation of our generations that come after us, Father. Praise be to God. Praise be to God that they will anoint, they'll be anointed by you, Holy Spirit. They'll be called forth in anointing by you, Almighty God. Praise be to God. Let your will so be done. Father, we present the saints before you always. The church, Jesus, the church, help us to be strengthened so that we will know and remember your words, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, our King, we celebrate you. We applaud you. We give you thanks. We love you. We love you, Jesus. And so, as, I, as we go forward, as we go forward, we wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our King. We wrap our prayers in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, our Comforter. We love you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We send them up to you, Father, sweet Savior. May they be acceptable in your sight. Father, may they be received by you, Father. We send them up with thanksgiving as well. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you. And so, Father, continuously, we seek your face in the name of Jesus, believing, trusting, hoping, praising. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's begin. Verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Here we are. Prophet Zephaniah again. We know Zephaniah is very, very thorough. He is not mincing no words. Praise be to God. So Zephaniah is talking about the portion of the wicked. And he's also speaking to us now about what the Lord desires. And what he will do. Right? So as we continue, let's examine. Together, together. See? Sometimes the Lord calls us together to showcase his might. Sometimes the Lord gets us together to say something that is very vital for us to hear. Sometimes he get us together for us to understand. Thus say the Lord. Right? Who is the nation undesired? Who is the nation that is not desirable at all? It's the nation of Israel. Right? Judah is the only one left now. At the time of his prophecy. And he's talking about the nation because what? Ain't nobody like this nation at all, you know. They of all, all the enemies of, of Israel 
have scoffed at Israel, have laughed at Israel, have looked down upon them with ridicule. Why? Because the Lord is actually dealing with Israel. Because you see, the sins of Israel that led to Israel being led away into captivity, when I say Israel, I'm particularly referencing the ten northern tribes. They were led away into captivity. Now, the same sin that caused them to be led away, Judah is now perpetually practicing it. Right? To their own earth. Because now they are a fragmented nation with only Judah left and they're still practicing evil. In fact, they feel even more encouraged to do so now. The Lord is telling them, get it together. Right? Because the king is about to speak. He's about to give some instructions here. See, the judgment of the Lord is about to be dropped on some serious nations. Though they don't desire anything concerning Israel because they don't have no fear of the Lord in them, nor do they care about the Lord. The Lord is about to speak. His decree is about to go forth. Praise be to God. So let's continue. Verse 2. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So what is the Lord saying here? He's basically saying to Judah, the remnant of Israel that's left, right? Because Judah and Benjamin is who's left now. now. So he's saying, get it together. Listen to the decree of the Lord, right? Before the Lord starts to rain down his wrath, right? Because the Lord described how he's going to rain down his wrath already in, in chapter 1, you know? It's not a small matter. <clears throat> he is going to rain down his wrath. Right? Before you know it, the wrath of the Lord will be poured out. Because the Lord will judge. Because the Lord will not be denied his wrath. See, before his wrath is poured out, he will give warnings upon warnings upon warnings because the Lord is fair so he's saying before his fierce anger come upon the nation they should listen listen to his decree right because he has already decree to bring about destruction in him. and his decree is true but he wants to give some warning still. You want them to understand still. Why? Because the Lord is not going to rain down his wrath upon the righteous. He's going to preserve the righteous. And the Lord is still having mercy to save. Because he's mighty to save, you see. So, let's continue verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all he meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be he shall be it in the day of the Lord's anger. See, take notice. The Lord is asking the meek of the earth to seek, to seek him. Why is this essential? Remember Jesus says, the meek shall inherit the hurt. Why do you think Jesus said the meek? They are blessed because they will inherit the hurt. Because the meek is humble before the Lord. Why? Because the meek fears the Lord and seek the Lord. Because the meek understand the power 
of the Lord. There's nothing like understanding the fear of the Lord. See, when we understand the fear of the Lord, we understand wisdom. Because with wisdom comes understanding. Yeah? They go hand in hand. So when we seek the Lord, we will learn of his ways. We will delight ourselves in his things and in his way. And we will uphold justice, his justice, not the world's justice. The world's justice is of no use. Filthy rag, full of corruption. But the justice of the Lord, true. Mm -hmm. So we will uphold the Lord's justice. Why? Because we will always stand on the side of the Lord. In addition, we will seek his righteousness because he is, is requiring that we do so. And not only because he, he requires us to do so, because we delight in doing so too. Yeah? We'll seek his righteousness. Why? Because even the world of sin and shame and wickedness, we will still serve the Lord or God. Praise be to God. Yeah? It is essential that we serve the Lord. Right? We cannot be intimidated by this evil world. We have to serve the Lord. Right? We will also seek meekness. Why? Because although we're humble, we will seek after humility. Why? Because we understand the Lord delights in humility. Why? Because even our Savior is meek. Right? He's not boastful. He's not arrogant. Very humble and meek. Right? So we learn of his ways. And we seek after him. Right? And why? Because it's essential. When we seek after his ways, he will hide us. Because he will cover us with his righteousness. He will hide us away from his wrath. You see, the only person who will be spared from experiencing the wrath of our God are the persons who are covered by his righteousness for his namesake. Take note, it is for his namesake. Why? Because it is his righteousness. Why? Because we seek him out. He desired to be with us and we seek him out. Praise be to God. Right? So let us, let us fear the Lord. Verse 4. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon, a desolation, they shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Now these are describing the cities of the Philistine. Right? The Philistines, they pride themselves in their five cities, the exalted five cities. But they have come up against the Lord one time too many. So they understand material things. What is that? A puppet idol for God? What is that? When the one true and living God show up, Everything is exposed. Everything else is scattered. Hmm? So, we know that the land of the Philistines were made desolate. For sure. Why? Because they had perpetually been warring against the children of Israel. Right? Eve having captured the Ark of the Covenant, you think they would understand the fear of the Lord somewhat, eh? 
they don't have no understanding hmm? they still lack understanding even after suffering at the hands of the almighty god they still persist in their ways to be defiant and to be rebellious and to continue in the error of their ways hmm? but the lord's words have been spoken and he's talking about these cities the desolation of them the way they will be laid waste you see it's when we begin to understand the fear of the lord eh? it's when we begin to understand why we have to be careful to pray for the lord's protection over our families over the place where we live work yeah so all the cities of the philistines will be brought to naught have they been brought to naught of course they have we can always trust the words of our god and you know? we can always trust in the word of our god hmm? they became a desolate place they became a place with where none of their descendants can be found today praise be to god so let's continue verse 5 woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast the nation of the charitites the word of the lord is against you o canaan the land of the philistines i will even destroy thee that there shall be no inhabitant see the portion of the wicked they will not inherit the earth the lord will not reward them they will not inherit the earth the wicked they will have their portion but it will not be to inherit the earth they'll be laid waste they'll be made desolate praise be to god right when the lord when the lord proclaim a woe against a place it is a woe against the place the lord is there decreeing you know he's not questioning maybe if he's not saying maybe i will know the lord is decreeing this that you will destroy the philistines and that they will have no inhabitant and such it was as he has said it so it is you see because it's when we begin to realize the wickedness the evil which these people have pursued the, the children of israel was not a joke you know it was very bad very bad they come up against them even when they didn't need to yeah and their pagan worship made itself into israel too to defile the people so, so the Lord is not going to play no joke with them. Eh? So let's continue. Verse 6. And the sea coast shall be dwelling, and cottages for shepherds, and folds for flocks. Right? Now, the cities of Philistine, the land of Philistine and a whole, was facing the sea. So... They prided themselves in that. Right? For their chief idol, it was a fish too. Because they worshipped the devil, you see. But their form that he took was some fish person. Yeah, because they worshipped the sea, you see. That's what they worship. Right? And here the Lord is saying. The place they so carefully worshiping and, and, and looking on and doing all kind of thing in that place the shepherds will lead their flocks there. Praise be to God. But I tell 
desolation. Desolation to the point that shepherd are going there with the sheep. That's it. Eh? When we look at the world today, we examine closely. We see a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Too much to count. Right? Something I want to ask a question. But is the Lord that's rewarding them? Praise be to God. We should fear the Lord. We should serve the Lord in fear and trembling. We should give unto the Lord the honor and glory due unto his name. Right? And if you find yourself dwelling in some place where perpetually they have like this unnatural thing that is constantly keep plaguing the people, take note. Take note, is the blessing of the Lord in such a place or not? We are take note. Right? Because we know the portion of the wicked, the righteous will inherit their portions. Praise be to God. We see sometimes when we don't trust in the words of the Lord, we can sometimes be in a state of ill in a state of unpreparedness. That's why we must continuously cover ourselves in the Lord. It is essential. Yeah? Because the Lord alone can do these things. Turn the place of our enemies into a place for, for shepherd to feed their flock. What? Praise be to God. Verse 7, And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah, they shall feed thereupon in the houses of Ashkelon shall they lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. Israel enemy were laughing. They were celebrating when Israel was carried off into captivity. They rejoice even more when they see Judah being carried off into captivity. They thought to themselves, this is it now. Not so, not so. Not in God's business. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The Lord will do what he says he will do. Here, the remnant of the house of Judah. The Lord always have a remnant here. They will inherit. It's essential that we understand what that means. It's the Lord who has done it. It's the Lord who is doing it. It's the Lord who continues to do it. Right? It's not by accident that the wicked are being cut down. It's the Lord who is doing it. It's the Lord who is cutting down the wicked and appointing them their portion. It's the Lord who is doing it. We can be very sure of that. That the Lord will visit them. That the Lord will turn away the captivity of the righteous. See, when the Lord visits us and turn away our captivity, it's because he cares about us. It's because he desires to restore unto us. Because let's be real now. Except the Lord help us. Except the Lord save us. We have no help. You see, because when Judah was carried off into captivity, right, along with the tribe of Benjamin, these Philistines laugh at them. They laugh at them. Now, the Lord is comforting Judah in this prophecy. They that laugh at them, they will return and get their place as an inheritance. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. See? The Lord is promising them, you will lie down in their place. 
right? You will feed upon their place. The Lord is rewarding the righteous, the portion of the wicked. That's how he does it. Don't worry about the wicked. See the accumulating? See the heaping up? They're only heaping it up for the righteous. Praise be to God. Only our God can do this kind of thing. So let's continue. Verse 8. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revelings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their borders see this Moab and Ammon children of Lot descendants of Lot let's not forget where they come from they come from this unholy act that the daughters of Lot carried out by sleeping with their fathers Claiming they don't have no other person to turn to, which is a lie. Because by then the earth was full with men. How do they mean they don't have nobody to, to, to turn to? They did an evil thing in the sight of the Lord. By, by making children through their father. Did the evil thing. And they have been the enemies of Israel for a very long time. Constantly, perpetually, enemies of Israel. And they find every occasion to make mischief and trouble and to war against as well. So they have a reproach for Israel. They have a reveling. See, because they love they love to incite conflict, yeah. Right? And so they continuously reproach the people of Israel. They continuously come up against them and try to magnify themselves making arrogant threats against Israel, trying to make themselves their chief enemy by creating wars against them. But here is the Lord saying, whereby do they do these things? He's, you, know what he's, you know what he's getting ready to do? To deal with them. Having dealt with the Philistines on the western side, he's now going to Moab and Ammon on the eastern side the Lord is covering all the bases. He's covering all the grounds and he's going to hit them really hard. So, let's continue. Verse 9. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of nettles and salt pits and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. Praise be to God. <coughs> so, the Lord is here. When you see the Lord said, as the Lord liveth, he's swearing in it. When you see the Lord swears, it's not a small and simple matter. It's serious. It's very serious. The Lord is swearing by his own name. Take note. Right? And the Lord is saying, surely Moab shall be like Sodom. No small matter. Any. That the Lord will choose this appropriate thing to say concerning these people. Can remember that the Lord will choose this appropriate thing to say concerning these people is very interesting. Because remember, these people, they used to live in Sodom. Right? Lot. Lot and his family lived in Sodom. When, when, when the Lord judged Sodom and Gomorrah and rained down fire and brimstone on them, that's where Lot's family was. Lot found himself on the council of Sodom. You know, 
at that point in time. Not that they cared about him. But they didn't have no respect for him. But anyways, he wanted to be so a part of it. He find himself inside the society. So, when the Lord is saying, Surely, Moab shall be like Sodom, and Ammon shall be like Gomorrah. You know it's a very serious thing. Because what did the Lord do? The Lord rained down on them. To this day, to this day, people been searching to see if they can piece together the mystery of what became of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know? But there's no mystery for them to be piecing together. The Bible tells what happened. Fire and brimstone rained down on them, destroying them. The profane behavior of them came before the Lord. He judged them for it. He did not let them off. No way. They become the breeding place, basically. The whole place get overrun by weeds, right? The whole place became overrun by weeds. And you see, because they are on the border of the Dead Sea, they end up with salt pits. And, a, and they became what? A permanent ruin. Anybody want to dwell in their place? Nobody wants to dwell in their place, you know. But what? The remnant of Judah will spoil them. Right? Spoil them and possess them. Why? Because remember, Lot was not even a part of the promise that the Lord made to Abram, you know. Abram carried Lot with him. Lot chose the best part of the land. Lot just chose the best part of the land. But all the land belongs to Abraham. Right? So that Judah will take over Moab and Ammon as possession is the Lord restoring to Abraham was rightly due to him. Think about it. Only the Lord can do this kind of thing. And the Lord does not sleep. He doesn't take a break. And he lives forever. So imagine the Lord can do what he wants. I see. He is saying surely. In time the Lord says surely you know what's happening. It's the same value as Jesus verily. Yeah. So. Let's not worry about the wicked. Let's not be concerned about them too much. We will plunder them. Right? Praise be to God. So, let's continue. Verse 10. This shall they have for their pride. Because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. See? This is happening because of their pride. You see, pride goes before destruction. Yeah. Destruction. Destruction follows pride. That's why there's no value in being proud. Arrogance will get you nowhere. They were busy making arrogant threat against israel and against judah hmm? you see because these moabites and ammonites they were very firm supporters of the devil you know? they passed their children through the fire right they sacrificed their children do all kind of things to their children let me tell you something the lord was not going to be gentle with them Mm. Now, see, even in Jesus' family tree, 
there were those that come from various nations around but you see these people that came to israel they converted they became israelites by conversion and their their, their ways were pleasing to the lord case in point root root was a moabite but look at the way she loved naomi and took care of her yeah just to tell you sometimes from different nations you have different kind of people they are loving people in different nations that's why the lord is saying the meek of the hurt will seek him meaning the meek can be in moab too you know and they can be meek they could they could have been meek people in moab too and they could have been meek people in Ammon too but just the nation on a whole god will judge so god will protect the people who seek him but the nation on a whole he will judge so take note of that right it is expedient that i point this out even in the land of philistine if they are meek people who seek out the lord the lord will save them the lord will save his people right it's the ones that exalt in themselves and parading themselves and making threat against the people of god and then blaspheme in the name of the lord those are the ones the ones who will tell you on any given day what they think about the lord in their arrogance <laughs> those are the people the lord will gladly reward I'm telling you most assuredly yeah so we have to be mindful. Enemies of the Lord, they will be dealt with severely. No pride can come and stand before God and be justified. Pride will be cast down. Praise be to God. Verse 11, the Lord will be terrible unto them. For he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the Eden. Right? Let's see. The Lord, he will, is it? The Lord is not going to be gentle with them, you know? Mm -mm. He'll be terrible unto them. What? When he ready to rain his wrath on them, he will make sure they remember it. <laughs> this is similar to the prophecy of Jesus' rule in Zechariah 14. Ruling them with a rod of iron. Okay? He will famish all the gods of the earth. Why? Because there is no god of the earth really. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are nothing. So he will reduce them to the nothingness they are. You see? What's the point? They have all these man-made gods. Reduce them to rubble. Right? Because behind these idols that they so carefully crafting and making we know the devil is hiding and the devil is a defeated fool so clearly no challenge there and what men shall worship right the children of man all of us shall worship the lord our god see whether the lord is is their god or not they will have to worship they will have to worship King Jesus. You want to live? Worship King Jesus. You want to abound and flourish? Yield to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. That's how it works. I was not playing around with them. So they worship Jesus from their own place. Right? As Zechariah stated in chapter 14 right 
they will worship Jesus in their own place. So they'll journey to worship him. They'll worship him normally in their own place, but they'll also journey to worship him. Praise be to the Lord. Even those from the Isles, the islands they're talking about now. Right? The coastlands, the coastal nations. Right? This is essential because sometimes these people think that they are they are God unto their own self. Not unlike today. Pride exalting itself and carrying on like it is something great. What? Utter rubbish. Utter nonsense. When God arrives, all his enemies has to be scattered. The Lord will scatter his enemy. I don't see how that can be understood. Except the fear of the Lord is with us. To be fully un to, to get a full understanding of what the Lord will, will do to the wicked. Right? Everybody from their place will come to worship King Jesus. Only our King. Our King alone. Praise be the Lord. Whether they want to or whether they don't want to. They have to worship our King. You see? Even Zephaniah had the prophecy. Even Zephaniah had the prophecy. Did I tell you? There will be nothing, no other God for them to be worshipping so badly. Every worship will belong to King Jesus. Or else they'll feel the error of their ways. He will rain on them. Mm -hmm. So, you see, we needed that too because Jesus is so good to us. Suffered and died for us. Gave up all his life for us. Resurrect, ascend, and still interceding for us to return for us one day. Let me tell you. Working, he did everything for us. Praise be to God. So he's worthy of being praised. And we will praise him. Praise be to God. So verse 12. He Ethiopians also. He shall be slain by my sword. So here is our king, our king. He ain't playing around him. You see, the fact that he keep mentioning this place tells us one thing. See, this Ethiopia is not just Ethiopia, the country that we know today. We have to remember, this prophecy occurred in times past. A lot of changes has occurred. But the area that is currently called Ethiopia were also included in the region that was classified as Ethiopia at the time of this prophecy so it's included you see where well, we have to pray to the lord to break generational curses to break the curse of our ancestors to break because we don't know what foolishness they had been up to and the lord's anger will be kindled against us because of their foolishness that we have ended up inheriting from. See, because when our ancestors do wickedness and leave things behind for us, we, we, we are happy for the blessing, eh? But we know the curse is attached. That's the bad part. Yeah? So, he's telling me, he's going to slay them with the sword. He's not going to spray them at all. Why? Because they were the enemy of Israel. They were in bed with the Egyptians and they were the enemies of Israel. You see, the sword that our king is using to slay them is the spirit of truth, you know. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Working is not playing around. Right? They will be slain. That's why we have to pray and repent of the sins of our ancestors so that their sins cannot continue to perpetuate in our lives. It is essential. It is. So if you never prayed, get to praying for the Lord to turn away his anger in the name of Jesus from off your family, from off your ancestors. Because you don't know what stupidness they were up to. You don't know how or with what or when they would have blasphemed the name of the Lord and taken it in vain and also speak arrogantly against the Lord and against his anointed. See? That is serious business. Hmm? So, let's continue. Verse 13. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. You see, the Lord is hitting every space. The land of Philistine to the west, the land of the Moab and the Ammonites to the east. The land of Ethiopia to the south, the land of the Assyrians and the Nevites to the north. The Lord is covering every single corner. Every single corner. What is he saying? He goes straight out his hand against the north. See? Coming for the north now. He's going to make Nineveh desolate. See, because Jonah preached in Nineveh, but Nineveh never repent for very long. They repented for the hand of the Lord to pass away from them. But then they went back into their bad habits. And so the judgment of the Lord came upon them anyway. Right? So... When Nineveh was destroyed by Babylon in 612 BC, right? Because remember, now, they were ruling over Babylon, but then the king was busy going around and making campaign to overthrow them. So when the king marched against them and overthrew them, the king led them captive, right? And the king of Babylon not only led them captive, but take away all the things that they had in place. So Babylon also took over the philosophies of the Assyrians. In fact, everything that Assyria tried themselves to be all about and all for, Babylon steal it over as their own. Yeah. Very interesting, isn't it? But they were built by the same person because Nineveh was built by Nimrod the same way how Babylon was built by Nimrod too. So see, the same system had rule over the two of them regardless. Yeah? And what is the Lord saying? He's going to make Nineveh desolate and dry like a wilderness. What? The words of the Lord will stand. We know that. As the Lord says, so it happened. As the Lord states, so it is done. As the Lord will it, so it is done. Nineveh is desolate today. When God is in control, everything is scattered. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh huh. You will bring your enemies down. That's the reason why you want to be standing on the side of the Lord. That's the reason why you want to make sure that your enemies are the enemies of the Lord. It is essential. So, 
verse 14 and flocks shall lie down in the midst of her all the beasts of the nations both the comorants and the bittern shall lodge in the upper lintels of it their voice shall sing in the windows desolation shall be in the thresholds for he shall uncover the cedar work this is the lord saying these assyrians built very splendid houses the king's palace alone was one monstrosity so big so grand so well decorated and furnished hmm? what is the lord saying the flocks the wild beasts the herds they are going to lie down in the midst of her <laughs> So serious, huh? The Comorant are the pelicans, right? And the bittern are like the edge og, like a percupine. Those are the bittern, yeah? So imagine, they will lodge where the people consider themselves to be the upper echelons of society used to be. That's where they will lodge. Right? The voices of these wild animals will be ringing out in their midst, in the windows of these palaces and, and, and houses. Hmm? And the Lord will make them desolate in the threshold become now. These people had such high regard for the threshold. Right? They had they had such requirements for thresholds that they considered the threshold to rightly be like uh you're passing from one place into the next. Like a gateway then. Hmm? So they had very much reverence for the threshold. They did not walk up on the threshold neither. They had the same belief system as the Philistines that their their God required them not to be stepping on the threshold. So some people have some very weird tradition. You know? Tradition is evil. When you examine tradition at the root of it all, it's evil. There's some evil in tradition, I'm telling you. That's the reason Jesus always preached against following traditions. He called them doctrines. See, we call them doctrines of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. We have to be careful of them. Mm -hmm. These cedar works that they are uncovering is basically the cedars that they have laid out. Now, sometimes they used to carve things into the, the wooden places. They'll carve them out. What, what what is the Lord saying? They will uncover them. Because they have no use. What is so carefully designed and dedicated to evil? They have no use at all. They're going to be laid bare. Bare for all to see. Bare for all to take note and give fear unto the Lord. Bare. Because so he would have it. So the thing that they took pleasure in, the thing that they rejoiced in, the thing that they were so proud of, now become so shameful, so commonplace, so desolate. That's what the Lord is talking about. Everyone that worship money and possessions, early possessions, will realize the folly of their ways. See, because all will be taken away. You're heaping it up for the righteous anyway. Well... We thank you. Because we know the end result of it all. It's coming to the righteous. Praise be to God. Verse 15 and last. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me 
how is she become a desolation a place for beasts to lie down in everyone that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand praise be to god so here the lord is talking about Nineveh they consider themselves to be a rejoicing city why because they always reveling partying celebrating in some kind of filth filthy ceremony and, and, and things of that nature they were perpetually doing it and here the Lord says that because they dwelt so carelessly because they lived in excess they lived in splendor they had nothing to worry about they were secure when they closed on their gates, their gates were well locked down. Right? But the Lord is saying, because Nineveh has said in her heart, because see, there are principalities in places. Principalities rule places. That's why we have to be mindful of. Right? So, Nineveh is saying, I am. What is I am? It's a title for Yahweh, for himself, for Yahweh alone. Like, none of the enemy of Yahweh should be boasting themselves to be something they're not. Hmm? Exaltation of madness. Exaltation of the wicked. What? What is that? See? They are taking over the words that belong to the Lord alone. I am and there is none beside me. Who, who says that? Yahweh says that, you know. Yahweh says that. There's no God beside me. He says that. See, if we're not careful to observe the wicked and the evil, we would miss a lot of things. We cannot miss nothing. That's how you have a lot of people being led astray because they listen to the doctrine of devils and it's all good. When in truth and in fact, it's filthy, it's filthy, it's rubbish. But he examine it with the Holy Spirit, you see. Yeah? So, claiming to be God, end up pure desolation. See? While bees start to inhabit the place. What? All the other citizens, everybody is strangers passing by there. All they can do is hiss and wag their hand. Basically, reminding all and sundry who would listen. This place, this is the place that decided to go up against the Lord and look the condition of them. They're, in, they're no more. The wild beasts overrun them. Mm hmm. Right? They'll become a proverb, a byword. You see, because the Lord is the only one who is able to help us, you know. The Lord is the only one who is able to save us and to redeem us unto Himself. He's the only one who's able to reward us too. So when you take yourself and put in yourself like you want to be exalting yourself above God and standing up against God and Making all kind of blasphemous statements against our God. You're only doing it to your own earth. That's what the Lord is trying to point out, you know. He knows everything that's going to happen. And he has already judged. He has, the Lord is not going to judge. He has already judged. So, fulfillment has to take place. Praise be to God. So, as we go through today, let's, let's pause and think about our God. Our God is gracious, our God is kind, our God is true. Our God is just. He will call his people together. He will lay down his word, his decree. He will give fair warning prior to his day of wrath. He will also give information about how to escape his wrath 
You escape his wrath only by yielding to him. Only by turning unto him. Only by seeking him. True repentance. Because you see the meek is who will inherit the earth, you know. Only the meek. As the Lord brings judgment on our enemies, the Lord will allow us to inherit the portion of the wicked. He will also give their habitations to us for a position. The Lord will come upon the enemies, you know, and rain down at them, you know. The Lord is seeing the enemies. They're gathering around. They're coming at the promised land. From the east to the west, north to the south. Mm -hmm. What they don't realize is that the Lord will make them desolate. His words stand true. He makes them desolate for the most part. And the only time they'll be inhabited is when the Lord desires for his people to experience life in that place then to be it he would have purified sanctified and then invite his family to join him it's because the lord wants to reward us you know the lord wants to reward us the lord will reward us our portion even that which the enemy has stolen from us it's because sometimes we don't even know what the enemy has stolen from us you know and the enemy is constantly stealing from us. So the Lord will constantly restore to us. That's why we are, see, that's why our prayers cannot be only one time. And maybe we will mention the Lord to restore us. No, we have to ask the Lord perpetually restore unto us according to his will and his purpose continually. Right? So... We'll think on these things. The Lord our God, He is gracious. Yeah? He is worthy to be praised because the pride and arrogance of the wicked will not save them. They'll be brought low. They'll be utterly destroyed and dismantled. Praise be to God. God is good all the time. Yeah? So, Let's celebrate our God. Let's praise him. Let's lift him up and exalt his name. Yeah. So. Let's pray. Most righteous and eternal Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Father. We worship you. We exalt you. We lift you up on high. We magnify your name. Father, you are worthy to be praised. We are grateful. Father, we celebrate your awesome goodness, your excellent mercy, your kindness, your truth towards us. Father, we celebrate you because you are just. You are our king. We are grateful father as we come before you we humble ourselves before you father we present ourselves before you father as we are and we ask that you will forgive us our sins father as we forgive others who have sinned against us father Help us to turn to you. Father, as we confess our sins and repent of them too, we want nothing to do with our sins. We cast them away from us, filthy rocks that they are. We want nothing to do with our sins, Father. Father, we ask that you fill us up with your righteousness. Fill us up with your love, your truth. Fill us up with your peace and your joy and your goodness. Fill us up with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we are thankful. Holy Spirit, we receive you with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Father, help us in our going out, in our coming, in to, to always have a word of praise 
in our heart for you that we will seek after the things that you love that we will gravitate towards the things that you delight in that we will serve you always Yahweh you are a God we're grateful Father release the armies release the armies in the name of Jesus Father let them fight for us father because we're not ignorant that this is a war and we know you will deal with our enemies we know you will deal with them in the perfect way that you have desired to be grateful teach us to have the patience to trust you that we can look forward you will deal with them Father, we ask that you will strengthen our faith in you, Father. So fill up our life with your faith, Father, so that we will call upon you and know, trust in you wholeheartedly. Praise be to God. Father, we leave our enemies in your hands. Everything that they've stolen from us, Father, we leave in your hands. Everything that they've carefully designed, to steal from us, Father, we live in your hands. Father, you see them, you know them, they're not hidden from you, you know them, you know them very well. So we will just yield to you and let you do your good pleasure, Father, because so you will have it. Father, help the saints, help the saints to grow in faith. Help the saints to grow in understanding and wisdom and knowledge. Help the saints to grow, Father, because Father, because you alone are God and you alone are able to help us. Father, there are those of us who have anxiety. Help us to remember you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Help us also to remember perfect love casts out all fear. Praise. To God. Praise be to God. Father, remind us that we are more than conquerors. Remind us also, Father, that we should be bold as a lion. Remind us, Father, that we should be gentle as a dove. Also, remind us, Father, that we could go forth in your name. Yeah? because we are called by your name because father we will seek you always we will turn our face towards you always because you are not just our provider you are our deliverer we are grateful we are grateful father father everything that we are everything that we could ever be everything that we could ever desire to hope to want to be let it all be submitted unto you, Father. Let your plans for our lives take shape and effect. Let us live our life in accordance to your will. Father, let your thoughts concerning us perpetually keep us and the way that you have designed for us, let us walk therein. Praise Jesus. Father, we come against every scheme of the enemy. We cancel every plan of the enemy. Every single covenant every single marriage, every single association, every single contract we bind up in the middle and send the blood of Jesus against them. Blot them out and break them asunder in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, consume them away. We're grateful, we're grateful. We are grateful, Yahweh, we're your children. So Father, as we go through today, let the words we've read sink in our heart and comfort our soul. Let them be planted on good grounds, Father, so that they could bring forth fruit in abundance for the kingdom. Praise be to God. Father, we trust you that you'll be with us in our going out in our coming. We're grateful, we're grateful. Father, is there anything I feel to mention? You know what it is. Thanks be to God, you're, you're just, we are alert. Thank you, Jesus.
Holy Spirit, watch over our souls, our heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're grateful. We're grateful. So, Father, as we go forth today, be with us in our going out, in our coming in. Be with us in the night watches. Put your robe of protection around us in our sleep. Father, let the Holy Spirit breathe upon us while we sleep. Put your arms around us while we are in daytime too. We're grateful, we're grateful. Father, as you will, so let it be done. Right? Father, because we are not unaware of the schemes and the plans of the enemy. So we leave everything in your hands because we trust you. Praise be to God. Father, do according to your good pleasure. Father, pour out your blessing upon our life. Because we know that your blessing is the one that enriches us and we have no sorrow with it. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Father, we also love you more than the gifts. We will also treasure you more than good and perfect gifts. We're grateful, Father. We're grateful. And so, Father, as we go forth, we wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your blood was slain for us. We are grateful. We anoint our prayers with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are a comforter. We are grateful. We are sending up our prayers wrapped in the blood of Jesus, anointed by the Holy Spirit. We are sending up our prayers to you, Father. Sweet Savior, as we have wrapped them, we send them up to you, Father. Sweet Savior. May they be acceptable in your sight, Father. We're grateful, we're grateful. Father, we love you, we thank you, we applaud you, we praise you. We're grateful, we're grateful. We are praying in Jesus' name, the only name whereby we are saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our King. We celebrate you, we give you thanks, we applaud you, we are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's go fight. Children of the King, let's not forget it. Also, let us remember to be meek, knowing we will inherit the earth. Praise be to God. Peace be unto you, as Jesus gives, so let's receive. All the best for today. Love you.